And I know that this is the, the second day of this international advocacy workshop. And we are glad here at Universidad Panamericana to be the host of this event. I would like to especially thank those that are around the world in different places. And I would like to say that we share these family values and we at Universidad Panamericana are also committed to it. I would like to say a few things about this university just to make you a general presentation of, of the place where, that is holding this event. Uh, Universidad Panamericana was found in 1967. At the same time, Universidad Panamericana and IPADE, the business school. And uh, right now we have uh, three campuses in the country. One is here in Mexico City, then another one at Guadalajara, which was founded in 1981. And the last one, Aguascalientes, which was uh, which started in uh, 1989. Uh, Probably some of you came yesterday to the to these facilities now in, in, the, in the south campus of Mexico City. We have a beautiful campus. We have some colonial monuments uh, around the, the campus and then some modern facilities. We are very proud of our uh, old campus here in, in Mexico City. And at the same time, we started uh, in last year, actually, the new campus of the Universidad Panamericana here in Mexico City and the state of Mexico that is uh, called Universidad Panamericana City, Ciudad UP, and is in the west, in the, in the northwest uh, of Mexico City. I would like to say as well uh, a few words about our educational model and how it relates to the topics that you are discussing uh, during these days. So uh, the, fir the first one is just to mention that uh, for Universidad Panamericana is very important the academic standards, but at the same time, a uh, person-centered mo model. So we believe in this, uh, not only in the, in the academic excellence, but at the same time in the human excellence. And we have like a Catholic or Christian identity here in the university. We believe in the integral education of our students and uh, we believe that we have to work with the students, not, not only in the professional terms, but as well in the personal terms. At the same time, uh, we think that the reflection and the dialogue are very important in this society. We need an intelligent approach to different uh, topics. We believe the scientific and technological uh, advances. And uh, talking about this uh, family workshop, and, and I, I was uh, reading the, the program. Uh, it has like three main topics, uh, migration, demographic shifts, and at the same time, climate change. So I believe the approach to all these three topics is very important to do it in a deep way and in this uh, reflection and, and dialogue. And then um, a few uh, data and a few facts about the university that is running this program. Uh, one an example in, in, in national terms for the three campuses of the university, we have 11,000 undergrad students and we have 4,000 graduate students. Right now in the university, we have uh, 220 PhD professors full time and we are focusing research at the same time. We have 140 members of the national system of research. Right now we are the, in the university, we're the second uh, private university in Mexico with the highest scientific production. And this is important because we believe in research, we believe in the current topics of society, and we think we can work together with many organizations in order to get uh, new topics and to find some solutions for the society problems. In the university as well, I, uh, we have a very important uh, exchange program. Right now we have a relationship with 185 universities around the world. I, I know that 
in this program we have uh, participants from many different parts of the, of the world and i would like to say something about the social initiatives we have in the university uh, as you know mexico is a very very nice country but at the same time we have many problems in our society in our country we have uh, poverty and we have a lot of inequality so in that sense universidad panamericana is committed to the, the social work of the university in the in the whole country. One thing that we are very proud uh, about to mention is that we have eight communities uh, around the, the, the country in which we have integral attention. Those are specific communities. Some of them are in the in some of the poorest places of the country, and we have not only healthcare but at the same time some programs very uh, different programs uh, and we focus on the integral attention of all the people of that that uh, that communities and probably we have like two main objectives with these communities one is quality of life and the other one is the commitment with the community so those are just uh, uh, a very brief introduction about the university i would like to thank uh, everyone for believing in this university and uh, we are going to open the floor to see if there are any questions uh, around uh, the world in the zoom platform uh, meanwhile I was thinking of a question um, we know that in at least in Mexico it is very common that parents get too much involved in the in the institutions work especially in elementary schools so um, it's like a double question. How would you describe um, a healthy relationship of parents with their sons and daughters' education in higher education? And the second one, uh, a, an advice for young students to set uh, healthy boundaries for their sometimes overprotective parents. Okay. So about the first questions, the involvement of the parents in the education. I think that uh, talking about higher education, uh, one important point is that I think that the parents need to trust on the educational system and the, in the specific uh, institutions. Uh, one advice for the parents for me would be to focus on the very, very important topics of their children and not to focus in some things that are more irrelevant or not, not that, that important. And talking about the, the students and this uh, overprotective uh, part that uh, Fabiola was mentioning, I think that uh, you have to trust on, on yourself. Uh, I, I, I have seen in this, during this pandemic uh, crisis that the resilience of the human being is very strong and we can do many many things and we can resist many many things and sometimes probably you're we're just like afraid of some topics but when you go to that topics and when you confront them uh, in, a, in a good manner i mean uh, you will find that you have a very strong force inside of you so my advice would be in that sense just to trust on yourself don't be afraid and um, uh, we, we can face many, many uh, challenges in, in our lives. Hello, my name is August. I was also present yesterday. I'm a student from the Netherlands. And um, sir, you just mentioned poverty in Mexico. I'm from the Netherlands and we often hear about uh, drug cartels and drug problems in Mexico. And I ask myself, What's the relation between these drug cartels, poverty, and maybe bigger uh, immigration to uh, USA? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Uh, I am not an expert on that specific topic, but I could, I could say just like a, a few ideas. I think in Mexico, uh, the poverty problem is, is deep and in some sense, uh, there are some initiatives around the country in order to, to face it. And I think in sometimes poverty is correlated with some corruption problems and at the same time with some violence and some organized groups 
that are not doing good to the society. So I, yes, I think there is a, some uh, correlation in that, in that terms. And I believe as well that the solution for this country is not only like uh, one way solution, not only uh, for instance, the, the, the public service or the government or the state, uh, we need the, everyone involved. We need the, 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 the companies within the universities, we need the social uh, community, I mean, everyone in order to, to, to face this problem and, and to try to solve it. My name is Mona Viktor. Um, I'm from Hungary and I would like to ask you, uh, most of the time when we hear about multi-generational families, uh, Mexico usually comes up as the prime example when grandparents or even great-grandparents live together with the family, with uh, children and how it actually helps the household uh, stick together. What I'm asking is what problem we usually see in my country is when one of these young parents want especially the ones that are um, live in poverty they cannot move out from these multi-generational households because they don't have money and even then the family cannot even provide them because of the extraordinary housing prices that currently are on the market is mexico also experiencing this that um, young adults cannot go out from the family homes and actually start their own houses or is that not a problem for them? Uh, I agree that uh, grandparents are a very big issue and at the same time, probably a very big solution here in Mexico. We have a, a, a strong uh, community talking about grandparents and I think they are very important for the, uh, the their children and the grandchildren. And I think uh, in social terms, that is a, actually a, a big solution. Uh, here in Mexico, we have like uh, for the for the grandparents and, and the and the people above, for for instance, sixty and sixty five, we have a, a social security program for the ones that have been working all their life, and then we have some like social communities that can uh, work with them in, in the future. Uh, now we have uh, as well a program for, for, for those people that the government is helping them. So I think uh, we don't have like a specific problem in that sense. But at the same time, as we live in a, a country that has some level of poverty, as, 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 as I was mentioning before, uh, they have to live like with limited resources uh, many times. But I, I don't think uh, it's that similar to, to the situation of your country. And at the same time, talking about the, the family in general terms, I think the, the grandparents are a very big asset for the, for the society.